Starship SpaceX's Mars-bound rocket is set to receive a huge update as the Raptor engine's getting a remodel and that promises to bring monumental revolution. In fact, it's a big boost to power to become the world's most powerful engine ever built. That's right, SpaceX does shock the whole rocket industry with the new Raptor 3. How does the Raptor 3 stack up against other engines and how will this enhancement impact SpaceX's future? We're going to find out everything right now in this episode of Alpha Tech. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk had goals set for Mars since the company's conception in 2002, initiating a stepwise process, beginning with uncrewed flights of the small Falcon 1 before upgrading to commercial missions with the larger Falcon 9, followed by crewed flights to near-Earth space and heavy lift missions of the Falcon Heavy, including a precursor missions to Mars. Achieving this ambitious goal requires a massive launch vehicle with a cluster of high-powered engines, a propulsion system for operating in deep space, and a propulsive landing and ascent architecture for operation in the Martian atmosphere. All of this will be realized by none other than the SpaceX Raptor engine family. Constructed from SpaceX's proprietary SX500 alloy with copper, aluminum, and steel alloys, the Raptor engine is a full-flow stage combustion cycle engine that runs on liquid oxygen and liquid methane, both of which, while in a cryogenic state, will power the SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, the Starship. The Raptor engine itself benefits from highly advantageous FFSCC systems, maximizing the specific impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. And while being the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed, it'll be the first to leave the test stand. One of Raptor's most impressive specs is its gimbling range, meaning the engine's able to gimbal 15 degrees on the Y and Z axis, which that's needed for the flip and burn landing that Starship intends to do. A gimbal range of 15 degrees is a lot. To put it in terms even I can understand, the RS-25 has a gimbling range of 12 and a half degrees, and SpaceX's Merlin, which powers the Falcon family of SpaceX rockets, only gimbals to five degrees on the first stage. Raptor 1, however, has been refined over the years. It is an older, obsolete design. Its construction was complex, difficult to manufacture. It had a long turnaround between launches. It also hit a thrust ceiling of 185 tons, meaning it would struggle to reach much demand for a Mars-bound Starship. The solution became Raptor 2, but after the first Starship orbital flight, Raptor 2 seems to maybe not be enough. So just three weeks after that, Musk surprisingly unveils Raptor 3. To be clear, Raptor 3 isn't just an updated Raptor 1 or 2, but it's an improved, more powerful rocket engine. It reached 350 bar of pressure, 269 tons of thrust. Generally, the higher chamber pressure, the more thrust and potentially more efficiency the engine will gain. Higher chamber pressures also let an engine be smaller for a given thrust level, which also improves their thrust to weight ratio. So let's compare it. For the predecessor, Raptor version 1 generated 185 tons of thrust and the current V2 about 230 tons of thrust. Raptor V2 only achieved about 300 bars of pressure, but that's an increase of almost 17%. In another comparison, the best Russian engine RD-180 generates 386 tons of sea level thrust, but has two combustion chambers and two nozzles. In other words, the Russian engine can be seen as one engine with two combustion chambers, or as two engines that share one turbo pump. So let's imagine two Raptor 3 engines could fit in the size of one RD-180, definitely creating a much higher thrust. In its closest comparable engine, that's the Blue Origin BE-4, it's expected to produce up to 240 tons of thrust. It uses an efficient, albeit slightly less so, combustion cycle and relies on the same methane and oxygen propellant. When SpaceX put the Raptor 3 on the launch vehicle, Starship's Super Heavy Booster has 33 Raptors, so a total thrust of 8,877 tons, or 19.5 million pounds. The Saturn V rocket generated 34.5 million newtons or 7.6 million pounds of thrust. The Starship Super Heavy Booster with Raptor 3s would have 2.56 times the thrust of the Saturn V. 
So far, Saturn V is no longer operational. NASA instead developed a new rocket called Space Launch System, SLS, and it generates a max thrust of 8.8 .8 million pounds. NASA says the operational rocket exerted more power than any rocket ever, and that was when it lifted off in November of 2022. SpaceX Starship Super Heavy is expected to dethrone the SLS as soon as it reaches orbit with its capability at liftoff. SpaceX officials recently said that they have more engines than they could fly now. Do you think SpaceX will be able to launch the Raptor 3 engine by the end of the year? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Now finally, what do all these changes on Raptor 3 add up to? Well, with more power, this will allow any Raptor 3 equipped vehicle to have a dramatically increased payload, but it doesn't stop there. Thanks to Raptor 3's simplicity, as Musk promised, it can be relaunched within an hour compared to Raptor 1, which took several weeks in between launches. This simplicity also means the Raptor 3 cost half as much to manufacture as the previous Raptor. To say this engine is groundbreaking, it's an understatement. The impact of this Raptor 3 will be immense. Let's look at Musk's ultimate goal, colonizing Mars. Thanks to the Raptor 2 quick turnaround, a small fleet of Raptor 3 equipped starships could launch several times a week. This means SpaceX could launch more payloads into space in a year than the U.S. has done in its entire history. This dramatic increase in annual payload capacity is what would enable SpaceX to colonize Mars. Musk estimates that a total of 1 million tons of payload is needed just to set up a self-sustaining Mars colony. In theory, Raptor 3 equipped starships could deliver this much to Mars in just 10 years with around 20 launches a week. That means it would take only approximately 1,000 or so Raptor 3 equipped starships working full time for a decade to colonize Mars. As you can imagine, it'll cost an awful lot, but that's where the Raptor 3 really shines. A Raptor 3 equipped starship is estimated to cost only $2 million per launch. Compare that to NASA's SLS rocket, which has a 15% smaller payload than Starship and cost $1.55 billion to over $2 billion per launch. From some perspective, Musk's hypothetical 10-year Mars colonization project will cost $2.08 billion a year, and that's the same as one SLS launch. Or to put it another way, Starship is 1,040 times cheaper than the SLS. Just a reminder though, the SLS is no slouch. It is a cutting edge rocket designed by the very best at NASA. It's just that Starship and Raptor 2, they're just in another league. Starship really could unlock the moon, Mars, and the asteroid belt for further human exploration and colonization. With such an impressive payload, a tiny launch cost, and quick turnaround time, Starship could also significantly impact Earth. As the Raptor 3 can run off carbon-neutral biofuel, Starship could, in theory, be the world's first net-zero rocket. Combine that with its impressive landing ability, the low Earth orbit payload of over 150 tons, and you have a possible replacement for a commercial jet plane. It would take a Starship 29 minutes to go from London to New York and only double that of a regular first-class ticket per passenger. This service would be impractical with Raptor 1's long turnaround time, but with a Raptor 3 equipped Starship fleet, it could easily shuttle passengers to and fro without massive delay. So, thanks to the Raptor 3, SpaceX could revolutionize aviation as well. In the last couple of days, the space community's been buzzing with excitement over SpaceX's remarkable achievement, the successful testing of a Raptor 3, setting a new thrust record. However, as news of this groundbreaking accomplishment spread, it also brought about concern among many individuals regarding the potential risks posed by this powerful combination of Starship and Raptor 3. Worries encompass the potential impact on the support system's integrity and the surrounding environment, prompting a thoughtful examination of the situation. So what exactly is SpaceX aiming for in this new engine? Is SpaceX wrong about building Raptor 3? In early May 2023, Elon Musk announced a remarkable achievement, the successful static fire test of Raptor 3, reaching 350 bar or 5100 PSI for 45 seconds and generating an astounding 269 tons of thrust. 
This represents a significant advancement compared to earlier iterations of SpaceX Raptors, as we thoroughly discussed in the previous episode. To put it succinctly, when Starship Super Heavy Booster is equipped with 33 Raptor 3 engines, the cumulative thrust would reach an impressive 8,877 tons, or 19.5 million pounds. But however, we must delve into the core issue at hand, and that's the launch pad. It's imperative to acknowledge that even with fewer than 33 Raptor 2 engines firing at 90% power for a mere 10 seconds, substantial damage has already been inflicted. Therefore, utilization of Raptor 3 engines, which offer an upgrade of 20% in power, raises serious concern about the potential for further detrimental effects. Moreover, the launch pad infrastructure necessitates significant reinforcement to withstand the amplified thrust. As an illustrative example, NASA's existing flame trenches are exclusively designed for SLS and the Space Shuttle. It's worth noting that even SLS experienced damage to its launch tower due to its overpowering capability. Given the immensely potent nature of Starship, one cannot help but question the extent of damage it might inflict upon the launch facility. The engineering efforts required to bring the launch facility up to the necessary standards for enduring such high-intensity takeoffs are extensive and demanding. It's essential to address these concerns in order to ensure the safe and efficient operation of the Starship program beyond its inaugural orbital flight. All of this raises the question. In the midst of a sensitive period marked by the FAA investigating the Starship explosion, why does SpaceX continue to pursue these endeavors? Actually, perhaps there's an aspect of the engine that we've yet to fully comprehend. It's important to note that having a higher maximum thrust doesn't necessarily mean Raptor 3 would operate at that level. This seems more like a test to determine the maximum thrust limit achievable. If Raptor 3 can provide a peak thrust of, let's say, 120%, it means it can operate at a thrust level similar to Raptor 2 while experiencing significantly less stress. In other words, its primary advantage lies in running Raptor 3 at a much higher safety margin and a lower stress during normal operation. By increasing their power, the engines can operate further away from their limits, improving their durability and allowing for multiple failures without jeopardizing the entire vehicle. The emphasis is on reusability, and that's crucial. Starship is still in the early development phase. The initial version V1 served as a pathfinder coupled with other early pathfinder components. Each subsequent version of Raptor becomes simpler and more cost-effective, with future benchmarks being educated estimations. The Raptor team is continuously focused on improving the engine until it becomes necessary to stop, as that is their sole responsibility. Stage Zero has its own objectives and has only achieved initial milestones. The Starbase team is also trying to make this more robust. In the near times, they're building a deluge system here. All these elements represent groundbreaking achievements, and it's highly likely that contractual obligations will be fulfilled faster by SpaceX than any other company in NASA's history, and on an exponentially larger scale. Increased power translates to greater efficiency, which allows for enhanced redundancy. In short, requesting SpaceX to slow down their improvement efforts would be akin to asking NASA to stop looking toward the stars or a baby to stop growing. It would serve no purpose. Next, one common question that arises when discussing rocket engines is why SpaceX opts for multiple engines rather than a single large engine? And what are the reasons behind SpaceX's choice to employ this configuration? Well, when it comes to the use of multiple engines in SpaceX rockets instead of a single large engine, there's three primary reasons behind that design choice. Firstly, SpaceX rockets follow a stage design where two or more rockets are stacked on top of each other. The initial stage propels the rest of the rocket to high speed before detaching, allowing the subsequent stage to take over. This staging approach is crucial due to the limitations imposed by the rocket equation. According to this equation, a rocket's capability to change velocity is directly related to the logarithm of the ratio between its initial and final masses. Essentially, to achieve higher speeds, more fuel is required. However, increased fuel capacity necessitates larger tanks, which add weight. 
To compensate for the additional weight, even more fuel is needed, creating a cascading effect. By staging and jettisoning the empty heavy tanks, the second stage avoids the mass penalty associated with them. Consequently, multiple engines are required to facilitate staging. The second reason is that it's easier to ensure reliability in smaller engines compared to larger ones. The thrust produced by rocket engines is proportional to the amount of fuel consumed. Achieving higher thrust necessitates burning a larger amount of fuel rapidly, which requires larger pumps, combustion chambers, and fuel feed lines. Ensuring proper fuel mixing and combustion becomes more challenging in larger combustion chambers. And additionally, starting up larger engines presents difficulties such as spinning up the pumps and achieving stable combustion in the combustion chamber. Using multiple smaller engines simplifies those challenges. Although employing twice as many components, two engines of half the size are more than twice as reliable and easier to design and manufacture. For instance, the first stage of the Saturn V rocket utilized five F-1 engines, as it was the largest engine they could reliably create at the time. Developing an engine with five times the thrust would have been impractical then, and it remains a formidable task even today more than 50 years later. The third reason is related to the requirements of reusable rockets like the SpaceX Falcon 9 and Starship. These rockets demand precise control over the engines, which single engines cannot provide. The Falcon 9 first stage incorporates nine Merlin engines, all of which necessary to lift the large rocket and its payload off the ground. However, during landing, when the rocket becomes significantly lighter, the thrust needed for descent must be drastically reduced. Each engine can throttle down to 40% of its maximum thrust, but nevertheless, even 40% of the liftoff thrust is excessive for landing. Consequently, fewer engines are utilized during descent. The rocket lands on one engine, throttled down to the maximum extent, and that employs a maneuver known as hover slam, where the rocket switches from falling to rising just as it touches down. Landing a single large engine in this manner, it would pose even greater challenges. SpaceX's upcoming Starship launch system takes this concept even further with 33 Raptor engines on the first stage, with twice the thrust of a Merlin engine and six Raptors on the second stage. To land the second stage, only one or two engines will be used. And similarly, the first stage will only employ a small number of engines for landing. Without that arrangement, the engine simply cannot throttle down sufficiently for a control landing. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.